So I decided to found my charity, which is called DIRT, because I have been an activist for six years. And during this time, I've educated myself as deeply as I can about the climate crisis and what we as the fashion industry can do in the face of climate change, which is, as we know, a very big topic of now. I founded DIRT because soil regeneration is the most important thing that we can all focus on. All of our clothes, all of our food, all of the wood and interior materials that we use that are not synthetic, they're grown. They're grown in soil by farmers. And so regenerating soil by supporting farmers to do so is the most important thing we can do, which is why I founded DIRT, my charity. I chose that name because sometimes sustainability takes itself too seriously. And I wanted a comical name that was kind of like, yeah, there we go. It's just called dirt. What can you tell us about this museum? About what? About, <laughs> Sorry. about this museum. About its mission. The mission of DIRT is to regenerate soil globally by supporting the biodynamic farming movement. And the biodynamic farming movement is a type of regenerative agriculture that is protected by a certifying body called Demeter, meaning that the word biodynamic cannot be watered down to mean nothing and have a similar future to what the word sustainable has, because sustainable is a word that was unregulated. And so now it really means nothing. Everyone can just fling it on anything and just say, oh, it's sustainable because I basically want it to be. <laughs> and that can't happen with biodynamics. How is your new life in Ibiza? My new life in Ibiza is amazing. Me and my husband and our two children moved here this summer, and we are so happy with this decision to be closer to nature, to be in the Spanish culture, to be learning Spanish. We, that's a mission. We definitely will be fluent in Spanish soon. That's really important when you immigrate into a new place, I think. You cannot expect that you just speaking your own old language is good enough. <laughs> you have become an icon of uh, sustainability. How do you feel about that? I love it. I love being an icon of sustainability. And if I am that, that's amazing. To me, it feels much richer and much better than just being an icon of style or an icon of modeling, which really doesn't mean anything because it's not me, it's not something I've done, it's not something I'm passionate about, it's just something that happened to me. Whereas my activism is something I do and I care about and I care about it so deeply every single day and minute of my life. What can we all do in our routine to be more eco responsible There are so many things that every single person can do in their daily lives to have a positive impact on the earth. And it sounds more simple than you'd expect. It's not like you have to buy an electric car. That's a big deal. And it also electric cars may not even be the answer because when you plug them in, you're plugging them into the grid, which is fossil fuel. So it's not like they're saving the world. Air, for air pollution, they're great. But on a daily basis, things that you can do that really make a difference are just connecting with nature, spending time outdoors, growing a plant, meditating on a plant. I do this for like 15 seconds in a row. It's so easy and quick. Just go up to whatever plant is near you and you look at it, you study it in detail. What do the leaves look like? Where does the color variate? How, what shape are they? How is this part of the plant different to this one? It clears your mind in the most incredibly powerful way. Surprising because just 15 seconds, that's all it takes. And all of these things that we do like that are so beneficial and so powerful. All, bene all, all indigenous cultures always say this. The strongest thing you can do is build a relationship between yourself and the earth and between yourself and the other living things who share this earth with us. I do see that a lot is changing in fashion, but it isn't fast enough. Right now the industry, as many industries are, approaching sustainability with a step-by-step -step approach, like, oh, one step at a time, we'll get there eventually. But eventually is too late. 
if we'd started this approach 40 years ago, it would have been an amazing approach. Yay, like step by step, we'll get there by 2021. Fantastic. But we're starting now, so we don't have the time to do this one step at a time approach. We need to go as fast as possible, change everything we can now, and then we'll see how long it takes for the Earth to regenerate, because that's what we're talking about. The Earth is severely out of balance. Water pollution, air pollution, climate change, carbon dioxide, but also just dispersal of water is, is not the way it should be. And that's what changes weather patterns even more than the climate in the, than the carbon in the atmosphere. Deforestation. When we cut down loads and loads of trees, water evaporates where it used to be held on the surface. Water evaporating creates warm and moisture going into the air, which creates shifts in weather patterns. That is what climate change is. We don't have time for a step-by-step -step and incremental approach when we're talking about these big, big changes that there are thresholds, there are tipping points. We're on the brink and we all need to feel a deep sense of urgency that leads us to motivation to change our behavior on every step of our lives, every day, every minute. Yes, I do have a strong emphasis on sustainability in my daily life. Every shopping decision I make, every purchase, it's every, every one of those is a moment for me to exercise my power. I can buy something and spend my money with a business who is not helping the earth. Or I can buy and spend my money with a business who is. And it's just, when you, when you think about it like this, it's really clear where you want to spend your money. And then you feel really empowered that if I stop spending my money with these businesses, I'm doing a big service to the earth and to all the people who may have been exploited along those supply chains to those businesses. And it makes you feel good. And then you can just live your life feeling nice and happy about the changes that you are helping to create. So making soil sexy is of course tricky. I'm thinking of like mud baths and things like that with naked girls, that would work. But really, what is sexiness? Sexiness is desirability. It's something that we love. It's something that makes us feel great. Soil is all of those things. Soil is sequestering carbon. Soil is giving us food. It's giving us materials like cotton and silk and wool and leather and everything that we use in our lives is coming from soil. So let's respect it. Also, a little fact, fun fact about soil. When you put your hands in soil and you mix it around, your brain gets a wave of serotonin, which is that hormone that makes you feel happy. It actually physically, on a chemistry level, makes us happy. Perfect.